Hi, and welcome to White Hat vs. Black Hat SEO Show. My name is Josh Machinsky, and I'm your host of this special end of 2017, beginning of 2018, state of SEO, craziness, what's going on? Today, we have a whole bunch of guests here. We're very blessed to have a whole all of our favorite people. Uh, first, I'll introduce, of course, my Black Hat co-host, Clint, the destroyer butler. Clint, say hi, Clint. Destroyer what? <laughs> he, he destroys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what did you describe? <laughs> we can't hear you there, Clint. Is your microphone on? Nope, turn it off. Oh, there we go. There okay. go. <laughs> How are you doing, Clint? How is your year going? I'm doing great. How are you? Wait, can't wait to get this over with. I'm fully caffeinated, so I'm doing well. Also, we're very lucky to have with us uh, the the two boys of NFG SEO and our longtime Facebook host. Steve, Steve is here. How are you doing, Steve? The fantastic Fantasia. I'm doing good. This is like getting the band back together. <laughs> it's like getting the band back together. That's right. And also, we have Mike Pierce and Brad Marbury with us. How are you doing, guys? Hey, what's up, Josh? Thanks for having us. Mike uh, was just clicking the always have you guys on. Let me, just, let me ask you, how many fucks are given today? <laughs> Zero. Steve, Zero. Got Zero. You, got Zero. <laughs> we want anybody who's out who cool out there, we want to know what this <laughs> means. It probably means give me a hand job or something. I don't know. Sorry. It's an end of year. It's the raucous show today. And we also have with us, we're very blessed to have with us, our good friend, Ted Kubitis. Say hi, Ted. Now he's gone. He's <laughs> out of here. He's like, hand job. He's also like, I'd uh, like to move right to the, the, the a quick segment called, what is the stuff that's going on in people's heads? Stephen Buchanan says, my shirt is on its way. Thank you. What do you mean? It's on its way off because I have so many buttons undone? Is that what you mean? I'm not sure what you mean. Okay. So for those of you who have not watched the show before, this is the White Hat versus Black Hat SEO show. We are the best SEO show on the YouTubes. That's largely because we're one of the only SEO shows on the YouTubes. So it's a small category, but we're also the best because we have the most knowledge in both uh, White Hat SEO and Black Hat SEO. And I challenge you to come onto the show and debate us if you think otherwise. You have an open invitation to come on and debate us for your SEO knowledges and your SEO skills with a Z or a Z, as, as they like to say in various countries. Uh, and the first segment we're going to do today is what's new in White Hat SEO. And later on, we're going to discuss what's going to be new in 2018 SEO. So I'll just start talking about what's new in, in, in SEO. A lot of stuff's been going on in SEO. Uh, Google has released a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, let me share with you my screen, and you can see some of the stuff that they're sharing. First off here, um, recently they just told us how to get ready for the Mobile First Index. So for those of you who are in the know, they have rolled out the Mobile First Index a few weeks ago, actually, already. And now they've told us uh, some of the rules you need to follow to make sure that your site is ready for the Mobile First Index. The short version is... Um, even if you have an M dot, you'll probably be fine. Uh, this is a surprise to us. We weren't sure they were going to support that. It looks like they're going to. But um, of course, you have to make sure that uh, you're, you're, they're going to double your, your, your crawl rate, right? So if you have an M dot example.com and example.com, it says here that they're going to double your crawl rate. So you have to be very careful about that. So I would read the article to make sure, but it didn't seem to be that much of an update. In fact, it seemed to be that they are being pretty accommodating. Uh, did you guys read this? What did you guys think about that? I yeah, it. I think one of the things too, that's important for people to understand is that they want their desktop version, their mobile version, you know, to be reflecting each other directly. If there's information that people need to have, don't hide it behind accordions and things like that because the mobile first indexing is going to, you know, cause some issue for people that are doing that kind of stuff, in my opinion. So um, adaptive design, in my opinion, is, is one of the ways to... Uh, to go about handling that, so. Yeah, the responsive design for sure. Also, they uh, released uh, rich snippets. They re released a rich snippets result testing tool, so definitely check that out for your rich snippets. I know for rich snippets, there's a couple factors. One, you have to have it technically implemented correctly, but also you have to have a high quality site. Uh, it's a good way to actually diagnose whether you have a low quality site, is that you have your rich snippets set up technically correctly, but they still don't show it. And that's one way of knowing that your, your quality might not be on par as far as Google's concerned. And of course, when we're talking about quality, we're talking about uh, user signals for the most part. And that's a big thing when I'm gonna talk about moving into 2018. Another update that they have here 
is recently, uh, and this is Barry Schwartz's blog, SE Roundtable, and recently he talked about something he is calling the Maccabee update. I don't know why he's calling it that. That's probably a, a historical, some kind of biblical reference, probably. And um, it SEO seems to be really he, he says he did the nice work. Now, people are really tough on Barry. You know, um, I've been tough on Barry in the past, but he was nice enough to look over 100 different sites that people sent him and tell us what he saw. So that was a nice thing to do. He didn't have to do that. He did that out of the kindness of his own heart. And he found out, for the most part, it was uh, uh, a quality update. It seemed to be hitting sites that have keyword, keyword permutations, uh, AKA doorway pages. So destination plus activity name or as in the page name or city name plus service in the page name. He said by far the biggest bulk of sites in this update, which was last week, which Google's confirmed they had an update that week. Uh, they didn't confirm his, his hypothesis, but they confirmed they had an update that Google seemed to be cracking down now on uh, highly keyword active uh, page kind of sites, the doorway page kind of sites, like Winnipeg cleaning, Toronto cleaning, you know, London, Ontario cleaning, that kind of a thing. Uh, by the way, guys, for you Americans out there, those were all cities in, in the Canada I mentioned. Yeah. Yes, we have cities up here, not just polar bears and, ice, and icebergs and things like that. Yeah, I, I wonder yeah, I saw that last week. <laughs> Sorry, Ted? Oh, I, I wonder about that because those pages, you know, quite frequently are the most vulnerable ones. They're mm. the small businesses that won't have tons of backlinks and won't have tons of content. So obviously the most volatility you'll see will always be in that group, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the algorithm change was targeting that group. That's just the pages that are most, you know, volatile to any changes. True. Absolutely. That's absolutely they're true. targeting and they're targeting certain techniques, and I saw that through a few networks last week. I abs absolutely saw them hit. I've been getting data, and they've been hitting pages that are described by that directly right now. And they did do a sweep last week, so hundred yeah. percent. And I think that Ted's right. Small businesses get caught up in that um, the stuff that spam is that is doing, and and the small businesses are a collateral damage to that. Definitely, Ted. Yeah, I mean, in SEO, we kind of work on the best evidence we have kind of business. And so right now, because no one's done a more in-depth check, the best evidence we have is that Barry has gone and, and looked at 100 sites and looked at, it looks like it's quality related, maybe doorway pages. So that's better than no knowledge, but it's not like, it, it could be way off as, as you guys are pointing out, yeah. you know, you have to do more. Research. I've looked at thousands of sites that we can look at. And yeah. We can back that up. That, that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Looking at thousands of sites, it's absolutely what's going on. Yeah. So you think that Barry's uh, hypothesis is probably correct then? Yeah. yeah. So from what I see, yeah, one hundred percent. Okay. Well, good. So you heard it here first, folks. Um, we got even more information on the Maccabee update, and that seems to be what's going on. So that seems well, to be kind of what's going on. Sorry, Brad. The NFG update, though. That's our no fucks update. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 I, we didn't catch the first part of what you said. What about it? That's what we're going to call it now. The no fucks update where it's not the Maccabee. It's the no fucks update. <laughs> okay. Right. Whoever has more research on it gets to name it. So, so it, it's now the no fucks <laughs> update. The NFU. <laughs> NFU we'll, 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 we'll get in a case. I, I, I think you should email yeah. Barry Schwartz and tell him that. I'll send him. Yeah. No, he, he needs like, to publish I, it. Say, here's the, here's the thousand yeah. sites. Publish it. Yeah, you 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 named this incorrectly. It's the no fucks update. Okay, and then he goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll get right on that. Okay, so I want to get right to the uh, topic that we're going to be doing today, uh, guys. So uh, we're going to be talking about the state of SEO and the state of internet marketing moving forward into 2018. And you know what? Because we have our fantastic Steve Fantasia here, who knows all about Facebook and what's going on uh, in Facebook land, I just want to turn it over really quickly and put Steve on the spot because we have him here. So. So infrequently recently, that's my that's my guilt that I'm trying to put into his <laughs> nudge guilt into that. Uh, uh, before we start talking about SEO and get way off in, into that tangent, Steve, do you have anything to tell us about Facebook, uh, about uh, how you're making money on Facebook, and also how to do Facebook moving into 2018? Yeah, there's a lot happening. <clears throat> Facebook is always changing its dynamic. One of the things <clears throat> that I would say for 2018, um, Messenger is just really exploding. 
So uh, a messenger bots, AI, you can do simply AI on your fan page. You can do really sophisticated AI through some services, but like chat fuel, things like that. Um, st seeing like 95% open rates on ads that we're running through there. So that's definitely kind of the tip of the spear, really pushing it out. Uh, Instagram is really exploding. I'm not an Instagram guy, but I'm going to have to be because I'm starting to see some just tons and tons of stuff coming from there. In terms of Facebook itself, um, what you're going to want to do is absolutely stop any web traffic ads you're ever doing ever. Stop it. It's just web clicks. Switch over to conversion ads like a click, like a page view event, that kind of thing. Um, really get into retargeting. I'm seeing a lot of people aren't retargeting. They're just um, you know doing prospecting constantly. I'm actually seeing a lot of people piggybacking off of, and, and uh, the SEO guys can back me up. Ad agencies will come in and just and just retarget on their website and just live off of the SEO that's being driven, and then they just retarget. They don't go out. They don't actively seek out. Um, that's something really big. Video is again continues to be huge. People should be pushing out video. Any kind of movement. GIFs are really cool. Add GIFs to your ads. Um, you know, there's a lot lot going on, and continue to see very very low. Uh, website traffic, very high conversions. Um, a lot, a lot of a, the traffic is just exploding on that social media. Now you said that um, you don't want to be doing uh, traffic directly to web clicks. You'd rather be doing traffic uh, for something else. Could you explain that a little bit more? When I say web traffic, Facebook has objective. Every kind of ad type is an objective. Yeah. And the traffic ad, the web site, the objective is to have somebody click. Well, what we're seeing and what is actually starting to come out and Facebook itself is reluctantly posting this is that you don't really want people to click. You want people to go to your website. So we're seeing right. data, especially age demographics. If you're 45 and plus is your target, they're very clicky. They just click on things, but they don't go to your website. And so you can actually, there's ways you can actually look at your ad manager and see the number of people clicked and versus the people who actually went to your website. And you'll see that about probably 70% of the traffic went to the website, 30% never did. So what, what we're, the new thing for 2018, what I encourage everybody out there to do right now, is do not use the web traffic objective. Use a conversion objective for page view. So what it'll, all it'll do, the only change, yeah, it's exact same, the only change you're telling Facebook, don't show this to people who are gonna click, show it to people who are going to visit my website. And when you do that, the actual cost per click will go up, but the website visitor will go, the cost per website visitor will go down. I and see, that's, okay. that's huge. Cool, that's a great tip. Thanks very much for that. Mm. Um, I know you touched on some things there that I know that, that are very close to Mike and Brad's heart for, for moving into 2018. And I don't know if you guys want to talk about it. That's the uh, SEO retargeting versus the, the Facebook retargeting. Yeah, it's kind of a sore spot of mine and one of the things that we're out there to expose uh, going into 2018 is that there's a lot of Facebook agencies piggybacking off of the SEOs out there. And uh, if you think about what the SEOs do, which is bring in new searches, which is new firing of a pixel, um, you're building the campaign for a different agency and leaving money on the table, essentially, for yourself. So one of the things that I think in 2018 is really important for SEOs is to have that um, skill set or be uh, connected to somebody with that skill set so that you can keep that money in house rather than having a third-party agency just working off of your efforts. Um, seen it right. multiple times, and it's always a, a nice little chunk of change that that they're getting off of um, what what we're doing or what other SEOs are doing. Yeah, we actively started working so. Facebook after we looked at a campaign, and uh, at the 15% uh, management fee rate, we could have tacked on another 4,500 uh, to the campaign. So that's money that they were getting just running retargeting. Uh, for them, a thousand bucks a day, thirty grand uh, times 0.15 is about four and a half grand. So uh, we introduced them to Steve because they really wanted to grow. At that point, he took them from yeah, what a thousand a day, eight thousand a day, because they wanted to spend money. Um, and he was, he lowered their CPA at the same time. So it's just making connection. You should be doing both at the very least. You should be for your SEO agency using it to capture leads uh, for your SEO agency. And you may be running smaller campaigns, at least in the beginning, until you're at Steve's level, which takes a little bit. Then you can get hundred thousand campaigns and stuff. So, yeah, uh, I I agree entirely. And and Mike and I were talking about this earlier. 
Um, and so just to explain what's going on for those people who don't understand, so you have your page here, you put a pixel on it to retarget all the Facebook traffic that's coming to your site from your Facebook ads. And then when they see that when Google gets the pixel, then they can retarget them on all the other pages they go to when they search, they, they see ads and they go to this different and they're gonna see your ad because of that pixel. But it's traffic that the SEO sent to the page that the Facebook guy is getting to retarget in these these uh, these ads. And so the Facebook guy says, hey, look at all these sales I made you. Uh, unless it was directly from Facebook, it wasn't his traffic he sent though, or she. It was the SEO uh, effort of getting traffic to this page that the pixel hit them so they could retarget them on those pages. Does that make sense out there? Does that, if you guys, if that didn't make sense, say so in the chat. And so what these guys are saying is that, and, and Kyle, um, Kyle Roof, uh, who's a, a guest of the show, he's been on quite a, a, from SEO Intelligence Agency, he's been a guest on the show. He does very something very similar. He, when he's doing an SEO campaign, he says, how much do you spend on AdWords a month? You say, oh, we spend a thousand bucks. He said, tell you what, roll that into our SEO campaign. We'll make it a, a solid cost of X and we'll do your, your PPC as well because we know we can do AdWords so well that we know we can outcompete whatever your other AdWords guy is doing. And so it's something to consider. Um, you know, of course, there's more than just one source of traffic. That we talk about SEO a lot on the show. It's an SEO focused show, but there's Facebook traffic. There's now Instagram that uh, that Steve has been talking about, and there's all different kind of areas that uh, they're going to be coming from. So that brings us to the main topic of the show, 2018. What are we going to see? What are going to be the main sources of traffic? Uh, Google has recently put out a uh, um, a graph that shows that for a while Facebook had sent more traffic to websites than Google, but it's crossed and now Google is sending again more traffic to websites than Facebook. Um, so do you think that that's going to change in the future? Do you think Google's still going to be the champion of sending traffic? You know, I, I, I'm not sure they're going to be the champion. I think that they, we might see those crosses again and again as they grow their businesses. But one thing that is important is Facebook efforts besides from recovering the revenue that's left on the table, they do things like increase your brand awareness, which increases your quality score type queries, which in turn increases ranking. So it really is a synergistic form. And, and that's, tw yeah, exactly. That's 2018 for us is really synergizing the Facebook efforts with, um, <laughs> with SEO efforts because they, they go hand in hand to each other. So. Oh, for sure. I mean, we've done tons of testing in, the, in that, again, the, the SIA group, the Search SEO Intelligence Agency. If anybody wants to see those experiments, by the way, email me and uh, we can, uh, or, or go, to, go find the SEO Intelligence Agency and you can join or I can give you a link to join. Um, uh, we've tested uh, OG open graph uh, tags in your page and Ted has also tested this in Cora. Uh, they do give uh, they do correlate with higher rankings. They do they do give a ranking boost. Having a Facebook page that's linked to your page that links back gives uh, gives a ranking boost. Uh, having people see you on Facebook, see you uh, on the retargeting on every other site they go to that does increase your brand. They go into Google and they search you, and the brand searches are a ranking boost as well. And the CTR click is a ranking boost as well. So you're absolutely right, Mike. And and we've tested every almost every part of that equation and independently, and it does give a ranking boost. And so. I mean, there's a, there's a, Google is not always a complete jerk. They think they're nice guys. And people like Gary Elish, when you ask them, well, what am I supposed to do as a white hat? How am I supposed to SEO my site? He says, build a great site and then buy some advertising and then you will magically rank. And, and he's not entirely wrong because if you buy the right advertising, you're going to be seeing the right places. You're going to increase your brand searches. You might get some links and kind of, that's going to kind of work. It's going to take a really, really long time and there might be more cost effective ways of doing it. And it's not going to target you for specific keywords that are going to be lucrative. So it's not really doing SEO per se, but it was what the layperson could do. Do you guys agree or disagree with that? Yeah, yeah. if you get your on page right, that's what I see a lot of people fuck up anyway, is their on page. Get that right, you're going to rank for some shit regardless. And then you add in traffic and it's going to bring you up more. You add in links, it's going to bring you up more. So it's all a piece of the puzzle. Yeah, right. and just be sure that you know follow your social links because you don't want to spend the benefit as soon as you put it on the page. How do you mean? Uh, all all of your interaction buttons, your likes and share buttons, make them rel equals no follow, so you're not spending your link juice boosting Facebook's page rank. Right, right, right. Now that's a really old philosophical SEO question. If you have do follow links on your index page, are you actually siphoning off your, your page rank to other pages? 
the index page definitely siphons page rank to, to sub pages on your own site. And you should be doing that. You should have your top five ranking pages should have a, a, a middle of the page index, in the middle of your index page kind of content link going to your top five pages with exact match query kind of uh, links, more or less. You know, it can't be too spammy there, but but it should be a pretty exact match. But is it true? Do you guys think it's true? Do you think Ted's right that you can actually siphon off page rank to other sites to, that are uh, external to you? I um. I look at juice very differently. I look at it from a, the distance graph kind of side of things as well. So I'm not as concerned as losing page rank as I am with the one to one and the 50% decay per hop. However, um, with the no follow with certain testing that I've done, there's definitely, there's, there's a certain type of juice that is flowed through the no follow. So I do believe that it will stop the leak of a, of, of a, of a particular type of juice, but there's more than, one type of juice out there that links pass. And when I say links, I mean social. I mean, even a Facebook ad has a link in it. That's a link in my eyes. They're all edges yeah. connecting different things together. And, you know, with with traffic on both sides, it starts to be a very different beast than just the core page page rank type of uh, flow and, and, and blocking that type of flow. So um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to harm you and you're going to have the interaction. I think you probably still get the benefit out of it with, um, if, if it is blocking certain juice, probably getting a little more benefit out of it than if you didn't. Um, so, um, it's a solid theory. In my mind. I haven't tested it directly, so I don't know for sure. We should yeah. definitely test that. I, I agree that no follow has value. So clearly something passes through a no follow. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Google's also documented and claimed that when you have a link on your page, you're spending uh, yes. what you're getting. So and that's and why page rank is still there. I mean, in the initial ranking order before all the the, the uh, rank score modifiers, page rank definitely plays a big part of that. And there's no question. It's after that when they start to reorder those query, the reorder the results. I think that's where it starts to come into play more with the different juice flow and stuff. And I also agree that the effects are minor. I think you're absolutely right there, which is why if you're gonna uh, go for a social boost, you gotta make sure that you you try and not negate it by overlooking other minor effects. True, but look, so I agree, and, and that's a good point. Um, especially if you're gonna link at some point with an anchor text to your profile, I'd rather have the, the anchor, the one with the anchor text uh, passing juice than the button, to be honest with you, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, <laughs> yeah. Know. you try and get the juice from Facebook if at all possible, because they're very juicy. Uh, we know Steve is they very juicy, juicy. You know, so Facebook's got to be juicy too. Steve is juicier than you could ever imagine. <laughs> and very juicy. <laughs> uh, very, very juicy, very juicy. So, um, so anyway, back to 2018 SEO. So uh, that was an interesting side side question, but. So let me tell you what I think is going to be big in, in 2018, uh, and uh, you guys, you guys, tell me if you agree or disagree. Um, I think Google's still going to be the, the major provider of traffic. And I think that's because Google has to be part of the sales cycle. Even if you hear about a product on Facebook, you're going to search them out on Google. You're going to search them out for reviews. You're going to you're going to ask your your phone. You're going to ask your desktop device, "Hey Google, I want to buy this or tell me about that." Google's finding ways they can inseminate themselves into every portion of your life and to every sales cycle. Um, I don't know about you guys, but maybe I'm wrong, but I think I think most people these days are going to ask for some kind of review or some kind of star rating or something like that before I, I they think, go and buy something. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I think you have to break it up into smaller pieces because it, you know, I think the real question people are probably wondering is what size will Google organic be? versus all the other channels. That's, you're, all, you're definitely correct there. That's an important question. Uh, I, the, the, the study I saw didn't break down uh, organic versus paid. But regardless, we know that Google is still going to be a huge sender of traffic. And in terms of SEO for 2018 and the changes there, um, I don't think it's going to change much at all. I think the artificial intelligence is just going to ramp up. Google has doubled down on artificial intelligence. The quality updates, the, the adjustments they make are going to be faster and quicker. Uh, watch what the White Hats are complaining about. That's where Google is going to focus. Danny Sullivan now works for Google and is a direct conduit between Google and the search community. 
And so anything his group of white hats are complaining about are going to get siphoned through Danny Sullivan and are going to go right to the Google quality team. I think that could be why we saw this Maccabee update. People have been complaining about doorway pages and uh, keyword uh, rich pages uh, and just quality in general. But I think, I think it's important to say, and Mike, you've been saying this for years and I've been kind of hedging my bets, but I think you could be correct that it, 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 it hasn't changed. It still links in content, but now there's a whole bunch of modifiers on top of that that might get you at the end quality this, you know, uh, filtering that du duplicate content this, that filter, well, duplicate content filters at two levels, the like caffeine indexing and after. But, but I think you can't just pretend like it's 2007, though. Even though the ranking algorithms are still content and links, you, you still have to worry about what the artificial intelligence is going to be able to tell about your patterns, all of your patterns your linking patterns, your content yep. patterns, your user signals. Very recently, Eric Enga, who is a top-level white hat, uh, who presents with Google, and you could basically consider him as kind of a Google employee, he was on the show very recently as well. And very recently, he, uh, at Stone Temple Consulting, he put out a, uh, a study, did you guys see this, where he wanted to have a bunch of people go to a page and do a happiness study where you move your mouse in a circle around the page. So that's a subtle hint that he's saying that Google is, I think for me, that's a subtle hint that, he, that he's on to that Google is watching our mouse movements. And people, when they're happy with a page, they make certain mouse movements, right? So if I share the screen here, just quickly, and you can think about it yourself. You can do this test yourself and think about if it's accurate. So here I am on this page. This is what I do if I like the page. I go, oh, okay, blah, blah. I move my mouse over words. I already know uh, people do that from watching uh, uh, many studies of uh, heat mapping. People click on words that they think are important. They update, they, they highlight words they think are important. They move their mouse around in circles, apparently, if that's important, that they move their mouse around in circles like this, if they're kind of consuming what's going on. They move their mouse over sentences they're reading. They highlight words they're reading. And, I, and we know that Google is watching all these mouse movements. Yeah, and, and on the mobile them. side, look at Sorry, the terms Mike? of service about the eye track. Uh, on the mobile side of things, you know, you don't have the mouse, but in terms of service, you can start to see what they're looking at. So, like, there's eye tracking patents. There's a lot of stuff that correlate, you know, on the mobile side as well with that. So, um, yes, very scary eye tracking no. patents. They're, they're watching your eyes and what you're looking at. Actual heat mapping, yeah. right? Yeah. No. So it, it's uh, it's absolutely something that the tech is being worked on in there. I don't know how much they're going to use it and when or whatever, but um, something to be aware of for sure because it's in the TOS. Yeah, no, I agree. And yeah, it is It is in the terms of service. Whoever reads those, you know, maybe one day you read it just to see, what are they, what are they tracking exactly? It's, it gets you some tidbits. That's what you have to do when you're an SEO. You have to read everything. You have to study. You have to research. And you have to have groups like this where you can discuss. But so I think AI is going to be big, uh, even bigger in 2018. They're not going to move away from AI. They're going to be doubling down on machine learning. I've tested the disavow file. It doesn't do anything. Don't, don't, don't use it. Uh, we've we've sent hundreds of thousands of spammy links to pages and ranked them number one, and they haven't gone down. So it, it has to do with with patterns of of quality plus your spamminess. And if they see these kinds of uh, two red flags, then then you're kind of out. And it's and it's a gradating scale. If everyone else has low quality, and, and your quality is is low or good, then you're going to be fine. But if they start getting high quality, you're going to start to go down in the rankings. And people, you know, people still don't get this. They come to me and they say, well. I ranked great for the last five years. Why am I not ranking good now? And it's like, well, because it's not the same, right? Even if links were the only ranking factor, your links have changed. So that alone would, would change the rankings. But they changed the, the weight they put on keywords. They changed the weight they put on content. And the quality changes. And they told you. They told you Panda is updating and rolling now. And they told you the quality is going to change. And Google's been, been telling us for years now that you, the quality is one of the most important factors. So I think that that's going to continue going, uh, and uh, and I don't think there's going to be a major change. They're not going to like cut out links next year. Uh, they're going to be they're going to be uh, do obviously the mobile first index is now rolled out. They're going to be running on the mobile uh, index. If you have a mobile site, if you don't have a mobile site, you could really start to see uh, demotions from not having a mobile site. If you're just running the desktop site, uh, you should definitely try and go responsive if you're going to go mobile. Um, and off the top of my head, that's what I can think of. You know, uh, uh, social is just going to be bigger. They're going to be watching every single social network. You know, if you can find an audience on Instagram, go to Instagram. If you can find an audience on Pinterest, go to Pinterest. 
where you can find your audience, where you can get people talking about you, where you can get buzz about you, so much the better. I have an experiment to show you here. I have two experiments to show you, in fact, to prove what I was talking about. Then I'll let you guys jump in. So here's the first experiment on, on the exact topics I was just talking about. So you're like, well, Josh, I don't want to go social because um, social doesn't give me links. It only has people mentioning me in text, so I don't want to go to social. Well, look at this experiment here. We did a text mention experiment. This page here just mentioned the keyword in text and the URL in text, and the URL did pop up uh, from third position to first position. So it seems to be a QDF uh, algorithm. It seems to be freshness. It popped right back down after a couple of days. But if you continuously have people mentioning you in blogs and social sites, that seems to be a constant signal that you should be ranking higher. That's the first experiment that I did. The next experiment that I did, what I was talking about a, a disavow, was again, I did a disavow experiment. Uh, and here it is. And I have a simple do follow link. I made it on here September 20th. Uh, and this is uh, this October 9th shuffle was all across all my test servers, so it was an aberration. And it was a global update reported by SE Roundtable, so this does not count. I think this, the, the, September 20th, the link was fine. It came back, it was fine. I disavowed all links November 27-ish, no effect. That, that page is still ranking there. So I disavowed all of its links, 100% of its links, right? I control everything on this SERP. I disavowed 100% of the links. It did nothing. This is like the fifth disavow experiment I've done. Uh, and it shows, again, that the disavow doesn't do anything positive, probably doesn't do anything at all. Uh, only uh, one disavow experiment I did was bad. I disavowed a link to a page, and that page was de-indexed for, for, for two weeks. And and that's that is a big thing is um, you know in in the in, you know on the nature of black hat people creating large sites spammy sites and thinking that they're going to get quality from linking out to authority sites no what you're going to get is you're going to get thrown in the disavow file and de-indexed so yeah I think the disavow file has a negative uh, connotation absolutely I think it can I, I think it can I mean I've seen that result in in, in the wild but because it's in the wild I, yeah. I don't know if maybe they got a panda penalty at the same time you can never say right. So that's yeah. where I think 2018 no. SEO is going. Uh, what do you guys think, Ted? Oh, I was, was yeah. going to say briefly that if the disavow file worked with any sort of immediacy, it would instantly become a negative SEO weapon. Right. Um, <clears throat> uh, in 2018, I think uh, measurement tools will show that Google is nowhere near as sophisticated as people seem to think it is. That's my prediction. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tend to agree with it. I like the idea of the AI being there. I like Rank Brain. I like machines. I don't like people looking at my site and having personal opinions. So, you know, like we were talking about, we are we are kind of the uh, QA department for what they are doing right now, Josh. And, uh, as they continue to kind of play around with Rank Brain and all of this kind of machine learning, I think that's beneficial to us rather than a, um, a negative aspect of it because. If I can go and I can analyze my content and I know that I can, I should be talking about these topics on a page about apples, you know, I should be talking about trees, potentially farmers, potentially harvesting. Um, then I know I can look at what the patterns are with the content at the top of the search results and, and emulate that. And there was a patent that uh, was talking about assigning quality score based on for new pages based on what's going on in the top results of the of that this particular query so emulation is always going to be a very important thing especially with content creation and and all of that a big thing that i think in 2018 is going to be um content scoring and making sure content is um correlated to the top rankers in that market and that query um that for us in 2017 has had a ton of success you know we've done a, had huge revenue increases through just on page and content reworking and scoring and we, I think we, that ran that, we ran that whole campaign very very cheaply because we we knew yeah. what to look for as far as quality score and content scoring uh, we, we didn't have to get any links we didn't have to do any kind of outreach we just focused on page for the first what, three four months and we like doubled yeah, their yeah doubled their revenue through organic search so yeah, it actually went from a, a five-figure site a month to a six-figure site a month just through content scoring and um, architecture. Sweet. So I think that that's going to be a big part of it. 
we're going to always want to keep making our pages better and 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 design them for the whatever they say is better. Whatever they say is better because you got to right. I mean, even if it's better, you know, it's opinionated. But ultimately, Google's opinion, I guess, matters whether we want to admit it or not. You know, <laughs> true. True. Brad, what else do you think is going to be happening in 2018? Anything different? I think what's going to be happening is we're all going to make a fuck ton of money. <laughs> That's it. That's all we focus on. Focus on sales, have something to back it up with, over promise, over deliver, and just fucking like the one thing I noticed that all SEOs need to work on is improving their sales abilities. Like who, like we can all rank uh, to a certain extent. If we can't rank, get in the right groups, learn how to fucking rank. But what you really need to learn how to do, people get stuck on, I need to learn SEO. I need to follow John Mueller. I need to do this. I need to do this. Well, what you need to do is fucking sell some contracts and make some money. So that's what I've been focusing on. Yeah. Yeah. Working on your business, I guess, is always a good to do. I mean, at the end of the day, we all, we're all doing business here. And so ranking is, is only one, one step in, in the long number of steps to having a successful business. Yeah. I, I feel like Ford Coca-Colas. And computer yeah. lick pictures and whatever else. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've noticed. I've seen two types of SEOs. The type of SEO that comes in, and I, I used to be the type of SEO that came in and like, I've, like I've got to learn everything. My confidence is never up to par because I don't know as much as this guy or this guy. But what I realized is I know a ton more than a lot of people out there. So I can go out and fucking sell. Get it in your head that it's a disservice not to sell them. Like have that in your head, and like if if you don't convey your message and sell them then like they're going to be worse off so you better get good at selling so you can make them more money you can make you more money you make everyone more money win 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 right i mean that that's a good point and and we get a lot of questions you know you know i, I get this question all the time should i be an affiliate of click junction should i be an affiliate of amazon should i should i should i do adsense sites should i should i sell seo services should i just rank my own sites you know there's this seo thing and i'm getting kind of good at it now, how do I leverage that? How do I make money off that? Should I just be doing audits? Should I be doing monthly work? Should I, you know, it all depends on, it's a simple SWOT analysis. It's, it, you know, what's your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats? You know, what are you good at, right? If you're really good at selling, maybe you should sell. It, it, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're not good at selling, if you're kind of nerdy and you just want to sit and type at home, maybe you should be doing affiliate stuff. And if you know a lot about, I don't know, tennis rackets, maybe you should be an affiliate of tennis rackets because you could probably make a really cool tennis racket site. But you got to look out there at your competition. And there's a there's a hundred million other click junction sites out there. And there's a hundred million either there's a hundred million get paid to sites. There's a hundred million sites selling this herbal pill and that skin cream. So you better look at your competition and see where you can compete. So that's I, I, I feel like everyone thinks that affiliate they get into SEO and they want to do affiliate because they think it's going to be easy. Where <laughs> uh, there's there's easier money out there than affiliate. I feel like uh, yes, so there is. Just keep that in mind. So affiliate think, a revenue stream. I don't get, know. If they, I don't know if I ever wanted to be a sole focus. Yeah, get your get your base, get your base and then start having fun. You know, once you get up to 10, 20, 30 k, whatever your fucking goal is, get there and then say, okay, now I can start playing. Build a business that you can kind of step out of for a day or two. Unlike, you know, we get addicted to the grind and forget to step out and look at other opportunities, but you've got to have that base there first. And it's scary. You know, you get used to doing client work or you, or you get used to doing affiliate sites and it's scary. Like, I don't know if I'll make, want to make that leap. Should I invest this money? You know, that, that kind of a thing. And this is actually, this is always relevant advice. This is especially relevant for 2018. Because here's another thing that I, I didn't say that I, I could have said. Google could very well, if they chose to, and Google wanted to be a dick, Google could go and destroy even more SEOs than they already have. I mean, 60%, a recent study showed 60% of SEOs are moving away from SEO, 10% are quitting entirely. So that's good news for people like us who are smart and can think outside the box and want to stay in it. But that's bad news in the sense that if Google wanted to, they could turn on their, they've built an artificial intelligence that can beat any chess master. They've made an artificial intelligence that can beat any poker player. They made an artificial intelligence that could beat any Go player, any any Chinese checkers, any Go player, the hardest game in the world. They build an AI that could do that in like a week. So if they want to build an AI that can catch all of us and every single thing we're doing, they can. So we exist by Google's good graces. And so that's another reason why you need to diversify. You need to listen to Steve, wherever he is on the bottom of my screen, and learn how to do Facebook stuff too. And you need to, or wherever he is, he's, 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 he's here somewhere. <laughs> you need to get on the Facebook. You need to you need to diversify, and you need to learn many different uh, uh, 
you need to learn how to do AdWords, right? Because it might only be AdWords in a few years. It, you know, I'm hoping not. And I, I don't think so. I honestly don't think that's the way it's going to go because we're not that big of a thorn in their side. And like Mike said, we're handmaidens for, for Google. We're like, we're like, we're like, a, we're like a doula. We're, we're the like QA coaches. Department. We're go-betweens between Google and, and webmasters and, and making it easier for Google to understand pages. And so as long as Google still thinks that what SEO is, we have a job. As soon as Google thinks, no, you're just a bunch of hackers and we're going to get rid of you now, we are done. We are D-U-N done, right? So that's another thing to keep in mind is that, you know, you got to – this golden age of SEO, uh, it might end at some point. You know, when, when AI is will so smart some point. that – sorry, Mike, what was that? I said I think it will end at some point. I don't think it's coming quick, but what it's like we were talking about. We're right now we're QA for them. They need us, like you just said. We're going to be around until they don't need us anymore. And then then that's why, like Brad's saying, and you're saying, diversify and and make sure that you are doing multiple things with your business or businesses, so that you are not tied to just Google's uh, whims. You know, that's why things like Facebook with the control and all of that. You know, those skills in place. If they do decide to cut off the, the, you know, turn on the crazy AI, the Facebook skills, you're going to be able to drive traffic anywhere, and it's going to actually looking at the patents. That's going to be what's going to make your site move up in queries, anyways. So, um, yeah. you know, it, so it's something. 2018, you get into that stuff. I think you're still ahead of the curve, um, but I do think people need to start looking at at all of that as part of what they do as SEOs, um, and it will protect them and future proof them to some extent. So. No, I agree. Now, again, I, just to just to be clear, I don't think they're going to terminate SEOs in the in the next year. They right. still need no. us, but but as soon as their AI is smart enough that this device understands what you're asking it, SEO will be completely meaningless at that point. You know, as soon as AI is as smart as a regular Joe, SEO is gone. Right? Uh, it's it's going to just be good writing and and making a good site. But I don't think we're there well, yet. Well, you know. Right? That brings up the point we were talking about is you have people like Steve who are masters at demographic targeting. Search is going to reverse. Products are going to go to people in the future. People aren't going to look for the products. The products are going to come to them based on what their demographics are. And that's where the shift becomes, you know, okay, these skill sets are very important, understanding users, understanding demographics. And you know a great training ground for that is any ad system that has great demographic targeting. You know, so right. that's the way it's going to switch when it if it does switch. You know, Steve, yeah. would you Steve, would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I think <clears throat> you already start. I think you're already starting to see it. There's always going to be a, a search term I need. You know, an Apple, but I think we're going to start getting into just they're going to know what you're doing and they're going to start showing it to you. <laughs> Whether you know pop-ups on your phone, on the social platform, wherever people are spending their time, this is going to be the dictated to where the the attention is going to be, and that's where the ads going to be. That's where we get, we're seeing a massive shift of billions and billions off of TV and onto digital and across the scope digital. And uh, and I'm seeing I'm actually seeing a lot of SEO guys come to me saying, "Hey, I want to learn this Facebook thing because I have this." I, I know I have these customers. I can go to them and say, hey, we have this new service. I have the connection. I can start doing ads for you on a small scale, and they're actually doing pretty well with it. So I would definitely chime in and support that the people start looking out, out with that because I think it's 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 inevitable. I mean, the, in the, especially with the third-party tracking. I mean, that's what for, Josh. We're not afraid of the, the NSA. You should be afraid of Facebook. I mean, they know everything that you're doing. I mean, literally, there's been tests where they think – they think they're even looking, at, listening to your microphone. I mean, there's like just stuff out there like that. So have you guys, I'm going to turn it over to Clint okay. to learn what, what Clint is thinking about his take for 2018. But have you guys done any tests? I, I've with my phone, I've talked about alpacas and skydiving to see if I get any alpaca or skydiving ads. I, I I have never in my life have I ever talked about alpacas, and I hate skydiving, so I've never talked about skydiving before. But I always do it with my phone, and my wife and I, she has an iPhone. We're seeing who's tracking who. We're going to see who gets the alpaca. And she got an alpaca wool ad the other day. Uh, it could be because she looks at clothes as well. So so I don't know. But as soon as we get an ad to, hey, buy an alpaca. They're great farm animals. Or, hey, you want to go skydiving? You know that they're listening to you, and you don't want them to listen to you. So, Clint, I'm going to turn it over to you now, my friend. What do you see uh, in 2018 black ad SEO or just SEO in general? Oh, I think you're muted there, Clint. The world may never know. It's secret. You can't hear him. 
Google cut them off. You do an interpretive off. dance. <laughs> you do know sign language? Do an interpretive dance of how it'll move. I'll, okay, I'll give you focus, and you can do your interpretive dance of how you think 2018 is going to go. Okay, go. Uh, that, that is his interpretive dance. He thinks it's going to be the same. <laughs> it's going to be more mind-numbing moments of, of looking at the screen. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Clint. You can uh, write it on the board. Draw. There you go, Clint. Write it on the board. He's going to draw a dick. Uh, I, I hope not. <laughs> on, uh, on page... On page... Kink? Mm -hmm. On page king, on page king. There you go. <laughs> you heard it from Clint, <laughs> whose microphone was working earlier. I don't know why it's not working now. So Clint, thank you for that. If uh, your if your microphone starts working again, let me know. But yeah, I, I on page has always been a big signal for Google, and it has to be a big signal for Google. It's it's the only thing that you can assume that no negative SEO is taking place, unless they've hacked your site or something like that. Right, and so at the end of the day, as Ted dropped out, unfortunately, but at the end of the day, as Ted likes to say, Google is nothing more than a, than a control F in Microsoft Word, with just some fancy filters put on top. Right, that's all it is. Right, if you want to find red apples, th th they're going to check for every page that says red apples or some synonym of red apples, uh, or says apples red, and they're going to score it a different way. But if you say red apples and looking for red apples, then you're going to have that boost. Uh, essentially, uh, I had a I had an experiment to prove that to you actually, but I can't find it. I don't know where I put the the experimental result, but I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it. Sorry, Clint. No, we still can't hear you. Fuck. Maybe that means that Google will silence Black Hat SEO in 2018. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you are. Cut his microphone. Yeah, there he is. Okay, you guys can hear me now. All right. Yes. So what I meant by on pages king is I think it's going back to what these guys were saying. Uh, so I'm not going to reiterate a lot of it because I'm right like right with them uh, agencies if you're going to run an agency if you're going to claim to be an agency and you're going to have clients you need to know multiple ways to get traffic and, and facebook is obviously one of the best ways in my opinion to do it um but you know twitter pinterest all those other ad platforms figure out you know find a couple don't learn a lot you're not going to get be able to master all of them i don't think i'm never going to be as good as steve is in facebook ads so if i need that level of expertise then i'm going to outsource it to them uh, but you know, know enough to make yourself dangerous uh, about a couple of those. And then on page SEO, I, you know, I don't wear a tinfoil hat where I'm in line with you guys saying that eventually AI is going to just know which, what is the right one because, you know, I think what that's, if it comes to that, it's going to be big corporations that are driving all the traffic and sales, the Amazons and those kind of big companies will just become larger and then there won't be any need for small business because uh, our search results are, you know, they know what we want and they're just gonna send us to Amazon uh, and those kind of things. And I'm not really sure. If, yeah, I'm not really sure if the consumer is gonna be game with that. Um, because, you know, even in, in, in cities here, if you especially in the Northwest and probably there in Canada too is, there's a lot of emphasis on going to small businesses now. People don't want to go to these big ass chain stores, and that's going. I think we're going to see that change in Google too, as well. I don't think AI is ever going to be smart enough to take that vote. Um, but then again, I, I I will say or kind of agree with them in that if you're on page is fucked, then the rest of it doesn't really matter. You're just going to be always bouncing around. Uh, the December twelfth out um, um, update. We only had one client lose rankings. Uh, his pages were set up kind of like doorway pages, and I I kind of confirm what they what you guys were saying about that that update is that uh, I'm making changes and I'm seeing the improvements. They go from they went from like three to ninety. I made changes last night and they're they're at eight. So. Um, it's definitely an on-page issue, so that's my roll up of the whole yeah. conversation. And that's pretty fast. Not Normally, good. when uh, someone gets hit by an algorithm, it's not like a day turnover, and your SEO can just fix it for you. So that's that's fantastic, actually. Yeah. And that's it's it's all on-page. I don't I I rarely build links because I hate doing it. It just bores the piss out of me. So uh, if I just do the on-page right, then I, I just buy it for Josh. <laughs> yeah, buy my links. I have, the, I have the juiciest links that you can juice. Okay, so let's. Uh, we're almost at the end of the show. Let's see if I can answer some of these questions here that we got going on. 
If you have any questions, ask them here in the chat. If you're watching live on YouTube, John Lewis asks, oh, uh, okay, I'm going to try and see all the questions, but if you use asterisks, I can see them more easily. Robin Smith asks, I am new to SEO. How and from where do I need to start learning online website SEO? <laughs> so where do I need to start for my online website SEO? Well, <laughs> I could do a shameless plug, but yeah. <laughs> you do it. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, you need to watch this show. You need to go and join these guys in the network. Go yeah. <laughs> talk. Well, we, we've got nfgseo.com. That's free. We do a free um, kind of webinar every month. We try and do Q and A. Uh, if you want the the down to the nitty gritty stuff with us and Steve, webtraffictakeover.com/slash/josh. That one's always there for people to join. That's where we do Facebook uh, traffic generation, making as much money as you can. Uh, closing contracts, structuring deals, uh, doing your SEO. Uh, we're actually getting ready to add a huge intro SEO section via Mike's request. Um, so webtrafficktakeover.com slash Josh. And, uh, you know, we'll walk you through it step by step. And I'm going to sound like a, a shill here, but if you're really a beginner, um, the Moz uh, SEO guide will get you an idea of, you know, the overall view of what SEO is, how a freaking uh, crawler works, how they do that, and then build from there. You know, you got to start with a very basic level of understanding of what's going on, um, and you can do that. You know, reading the Moz guide as well, and then take that all with a grain of salt. You know, watch to Josh's old videos. Um, there's there's been gems in, in some of these videos over the last four or five years that. A lot of people missed uh, on because they don't follow certain people and they don't follow you. You know, those kind of things too. So there's that route as well. And then when you're ready for a community that sticks together and helps each other, then that's 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 like what Brad was just talking about. Um, 2018 is all about making sure the SEOs. Um, I'm all about making sure the SEOs get the Facebook revenue that the Facebook agencies have been taking from the SEOs table. <laughs> and that's my goal in 2018. I focus on taking it from other SEOs too, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be taking it from everybody. Everyone's moving away from SEO. We are embedded in SEO and you better uh, I'm not going game. anywhere. I won't be going anywhere. Yeah. Better have your game set up because all these guys here know what they're doing and can make a killing. We should have an SEO ranking contest one one year. You guys want to do that next year? You know, it's fun to do. It would be a good idea. We did a few last uh, in about a year ago, and they're a lot of fun to do. Yeah. I want to put it out there to, be fun to all those guys sure. too. I want to make an SEO ranking contest on some garbage SERP, and we'll see who wins at the end of three months or six months. We, we should do it. With yeah, it would be fun. Followers. Uh, right, Brad? We should do it with all your followers and have a prize. Uh, yeah. Here's the form. Enter it. Uh, enter your website and we'll, we'll see who wins and you got to be entered into it by a certain date and it ends at a certain date and we'll do it it's like all people getting started that's a really good way to learn because then you look at what everyone else is doing what if we did it to make donations to a charity and then facebook people could compete as well and then then steve could compete and he could say all right we sent ten thousand people from seo but they only donated five hundred dollars to the charity he sent a, he sent a thousand dollars, but they donated ten thousand to the charity. We could we could we could do something like that. How about that? In quality, that'd be fun. We could work it out. So we'll make a fake. It'll be a, it'll be donated to a real charity, but we'll make a fake keyword up. We'll call it like the 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 Frufra competition or something, and then we'll we'll donate it to a real charity. Like, I don't know, cancer association, whatever, some real charity. And then Facebook people could, and AdWords people, and we could have a competition, a, a kind of a global competition. I think that would be really cool. I think that would be pretty, pretty huge, actually. Can we, can we go to any country or just U.S.? Uh, any country, because if you get your cheap clicks from Brazil, they're not going to have as much money to donate, so there'll be a, a pro and a con. Afghanistan. <laughs> you get cheap clicks from Afghanistan, but they, won't have, they won't have any money to pay to the Cancer Society. Facebook has a bot or something in Afghanistan because they're, I don't even think there's that many people having internet in Afghanistan. <laughs> and, and I just see some crazy stuff coming out of there. As I understand it, Clint, you actually spent some time there, didn't you? Yeah, most of their internet access is um, the rich people and then mostly mobile phones. So it's not, you know, not like us, but there's some smart people over there, but 98% of them are pretty retarded. So. <laughs> Well, if you're making any claims, there you have it. 
Okay, I'm just going to move right past that because <laughs> there's a whole history there. John Lewis asks, uh, exact match anchor text for internal linking. I don't mean the navigation bar. To the page you want Google to rank for the exact phrase, yes or no? The answer is yes. Your internal yeah. linking should definitely be as close to exact match as possible. That and LSI, I just you still don't want to overdo it. Yeah, you don't want yeah. to overdo it. Yeah. It that depends how commercial it is. So, you know, if it's an obvious search phrase, and I can never think of an example, but if it's if it's only something people search for, but it's not proper English, don't do that. Yeah. But if it's if it's like the if 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 they want to buy red apples, you put a link to buy red apples here, click it, and they go right there. I mean, that's fine. It's absolutely. I think um, you know Clint was talking about on page, and we were talking about campaigns that were just on page. That, that's a big part of it. Smart internal architecture is a big part of it. It's a huge part of it. I mean, Google has admitted this a million times, and testing has proven it a million times. Uh, Omar Ruiz asks, what would work best for small businesses in which target customers are within 20 miles from the business location? So, AKA, how do I do local SEO? How do Your we answer that? Pages <laughs> doorway pages, yeah. We hear yeah, Google doorway, doorway pages. pages. Dude, do more doorway pages. No, you um, just, I mean, start with the site, I mean, get your social entity built around it to prove that you're a real fucking company. You know, what would, if you're doing an HVAC site, what would an HVAC guy do? He would have a Facebook page, he might have a Google Plus. Go out and get at least those, create it. You need to get your GMB up if you can, at all possible, because that proves that you're a real business. Google just My Business, it. yeah. Yeah, prove you're real, and then start, I mean, depending on how you get your links, link outreach, uh, PBNs if you do them. I know Josh doesn't. Uh, we've got a special way of doing them. Uh, just you know, start content plus links at the end of the day. And reviews and ratings, and make sure your Google My Business yeah. is totally yeah. filled out. If you have a local office, get a, get, a, get an enhanced listing with a 360 degree tour. That definitely yes. gives a boost for local. Mm -hmm. If you have your own 100%. office, for sure. Fill out everything you can in the GMB. If you have free parking, put it yes. in there. Like yes. everything that you can put in that GMB, put it in there. You're to you're so hey, right, Mike. You're difference. completely right. And then I would say if on the advertising side, if you are going local, you actually have a massive advantage because if you just drop a pin twenty, a circle twenty uh, miles, then your your ad dollar is going to go much much farther because you're oh, yeah. only serving it to let's say a hundred thousand people, and then now you're going into your interest. And then, you know, so you're doing that. So it's very, very inexpensive, a few hundred dollars a month. And I would recommend, you know, if you had a few hundred dollars and you don't want to do, I would probably assume ad work for each HVAC is too expensive. But you could put a $300 campaign into Facebook across all audience network and serve it to, um, you know, 100,000 people very, very cheaply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you give an incentive in the ad? Like, like uh, come visit us for 10% off or for a free coffee? If you want to do HVAC, what I would do for HVAC, the problem is that you're going to still pay to find your audience. So I would probably take an HVAC and I would I would make some kind of uh, like I would use the I would use video, some kind of video that somebody who's interested in, in commercial or residential split them up and then shows like new air conditioning or something and then retarget people based on how long they watched it. So that way you can get a very very low cost click, so that you're not just showing it to every hundred thousand person, you're showing it to the four hundred people who watched one minute video on home installation of HVAC, you know, because who's going to watch that? Just your potential customer. And then show them for HVAC, I would go to a lead form. I would create a lead form and I would say for your instant quote, some information here, they're on their phone, they hit the button, you get it through your email. It's, it's a winner winner. Lead forms are awesome. Uh, they came out last year. Nobody's using them. I recommend them to everybody, mm. but they're expensive. So pre-qualify, retarget off of your website, show them a lead form. Or a video view, show them a lead. It all, it all goes back to marketing basics too, because it's all about multiple touches. You know, statistically, are people going to buy off the first touch? No. So Steve touches people. You know, no. yeah. Now, now, Brad, <laughs> keep it clean. Yeah. He touches people multiple times. You know, with the cheapest ads possible, and then he hits them with the expensive ad, but they're already pre Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to move past those jokes really quickly. Um, yes. Uh, one last thing there, Steve. Do you think, I mean, a lot of local colleges have a theater department and could do movies and commercials really, really cheaply. Would, would you go that route? Would you have like a... I would love it. Yeah, absolutely. Reach out and say, and, and just say you'll give credit to it on either the website or even on the small context or whatever. 
and just be careful because website Facebook has a 20% rule for text. So don't get overly splashy with the text on the video because you can add text later with editors in terms of the slideshow. Um, but yeah, that'd be good. Qu quality is really, I'm really seeing quality. It has to be quality. The days of the HVAC, it could be. It. How do you know when your HVAC is not working? And it could have kind of like a, a funny commercial where people are dying, they're all hot, they're yep. taking their clothes off. You know, she's taking her, her, her blouse off because it's too hot. Well, that, I mean, that's pretty amazing. Call so and so HVAC, and they'll fix it yeah. for you. you know, and and yeah. everyone watches that, and then we, we talk. We to actually, everyone fix it. in media production in high school. We even we sold ads to like local, like the local pizza place or the local dentist. We would show them on the announcements. Our media production uh, class would make the commercials and show them like before the announcement. So we were getting donations, like we needed a new camera or new lighting or new whatever. We would go out to the local businesses. Hey, you want to give us a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, whatever? And then we would they donate to the school, and we get the equipment we needed, and they would get you know good faith business, whatever. It's a small town, so I'm sure they didn't get a ton of new business that they weren't already getting. But you know, it's if they're going to put their name on a basketball for a basketball game, they're gonna they're gonna donate to right. uh, the school. Definitely, yeah. Make connections with your other local businesses, and get free video because people are watching video, folks. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, Omar asks, uh, I am running two Facebook ads, a video and a picture. Video shows men have a high percentage of watching and women click on image. There's not really a question there. Uh, then he goes on to say, my target audience is 45 plus. I'm curious to learn if I would need to perform any SEO on my Facebook business page. Plus, is there any SEO tactics for Facebook ad campaigns? He needs to break up the audiences. If the video is doing better for men, he needs to show that video ad to only men. If he's if the female audience is doing well with the picture, he needs to show that audience strictly to the the picture. Uh, yeah, and I would also I would also tell him to take a step back. Who's actually going to the website? True. So if the women are clicking it and they're going to your website and you look at your Google Analytics and you're seeing that, then the, yeah, I would I would start running down that phrase. If the men are watching your video but not clicking. Then try taking that audience you created of a thousand men, showing them the same ad you showed the women, and compare the two. You know, maybe you can get maybe because you know, statistically, women over forty-five are very clicky, um, and they like to click on things. Statistically, you know, and over fifty-five it goes off the chart of how much they love to click. <laughs> so I would kind of look at that and try and figure out a way. You know, who's actually going to your site? The end of this is not really to show an ad and get smileys and stuff. It's to get people to your website and buy your product. So I would kind of look at the information there. You know, you're, you're completely right. There's multiple KPIs. In terms of the SEO question, for the SEO benefit, all you need is someone who's going to like your site. They're going to move around their mouse like I showed you there. They're, they're not going to bounce right away. They're going to look like they're enjoying it, engaging with it a little bit, one, for the traffic. If they make a purchase, even better, because then that's, that's even better. Uh, then you actually make money, which you're supposed to do at the end of the day. Make sure your Facebook page does have some discussion, does have some likes, does have some comments. It's not a complete ghost town. And you link to it with a nofollow link that Ted said. And it links back in its website field to your page, and then Google will make that connection. That that Facebook page is an indication of how you how real you are. I've been able to rank affiliate sites for years that otherwise are just spammy garbage sites, but they have a real looking Facebook page that people actually confuse with the affiliate product, the main product, and think that like if the product was called Josh's Skin Cream, and I'm just an affiliate of it, they go to my Josh's Skin Cream Facebook page and they think it's the real the real Facebook page of that company and they're asking questions and we're making sales off the Facebook page. So now I have two properties I can sell later on. I have the affiliate site and I have the Facebook page I can sell that people think are the real Facebook page for XYZ Skin Cream. So uh, it, it, it all it all helped Google know that my affiliate site was a real site that was uh, they should be ranking. Uh, 3D Printer Chat says, hey guys, on my site I have recent posts all over the index page, newspaper style. Is that wrong? My answer is yes. You can't target a keyword if the content is always changing. You guys agree or disagree? I, I mean, if you're yeah, targeting, depends, if you're targeting the internal pages, then, I mean, you're not really targeting anything for the home page, then it just depends. Yeah. It's like... It, it depends yeah, if I'm yeah. doing some sort of viral type of site. It really depends on the site type and what yeah. if you're if you're a small business trying to conduct business, yeah, you're wrong. Yeah, um, I would agree with Josh. If you're just trying to move people around through posts and up your page views, then you're potentially right. It, it's kind of a loaded question. It's a little spammy. Yeah. 
it is. I mean, the viral tactics are a little spammy, so that's a fair that's a fair way to call it. I mean, you don't have a brand, you don't have a front yeah. shape, you don't have that's a spammy niche. Yeah, if you're yeah. doing viral, yeah. I just get lazy and post a blog roll on the homepage, like nftsgo.com. Yeah, on, on on a PBN site, that's what you would expect. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean on on money sites, you know, which is like why you should do it. Yeah. Yeah. You could have a sidebar, which was your latest articles. Yeah. So you can have a main content and a, a main header and you know, like a main sales value proposition. Like, are you getting your best HVAC? You know, and then buy now, free quote, and then lay a blog roll. That's fine. But you've got to sell a little bit. You got to, what's your main brand? What's your main thing? Even uh, in some of our publishing sites, like the larger ones um, that have similar setups like that, we're using sidebar. We're using a little bit of a blog roll, but then also featured type article stuff to kind of um, take care of some of the issues of being just a, you know, an eye, an eye porn type of page like Pinterest, you know. So there's some offsets you can do to use a, a hybrid model of that that stay a little less spammy and do all right. But yeah, um, yeah, 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 definitely for sure. Um, Paul Fussell asked a question that I think is uh, based on something that uh, Mike was mentioning. He asks, what is your outline for content scoring? It's focusing on the entities, um, the main direct entity, and then um, salient topics to those entities, um, focusing on other aspects like correlation to the content that's in that SERP. Um, we just have a kind of a method that we use. Um, shameless plug that, you know, that's what we're doing with like the community. We're always kind of evolving how we're scoring that in web traffic takeover and um, it, it's been doing really well for Brad and I and uh, it, it's something that if you know your SEO and you know your market you can come up with your own kind of uh, scoring methodology um, but there there's definitely needs to be a focus on the right topics on on the page that's a big Wait. one Wait. Um James Brigtown, uh, oh no, sorry, 3D Printer Chat asks, is there a way to try Cora without buying it first? Email me. Uh, I don't think so, but I'll see what I can do. Email me at joshbashinsky at gmail.com. You don't need to try it first if you're serious about your SEO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want the data, if you're serious about it, you just want to get it, right? Uh, James Brigstown um, uh, asks, he says, nobody does affiliate marketing anymore, question mark? Uh, the, no, of no. course they do. There are 100 million people in India who are getting into affiliate marketing right now. Literally 100 million people. That's that's who you're competing with. You have a one in 100 million chance of making it. That's that's who you're competing with there. I did well, a series of training for Max Bounty, and and they are bringing in even that program is probably bringing in 150,000 people from India are joining that program there as well. So just don't get in it and uh, think it's going to be like a cakewalk is what I was saying though. You know, everyone wants yeah, the exactly. affiliate and you know, think it's going to be easy. The, the no. one man affiliate killing it. I know I know a lot of them that are doing, you know, very well six figures a month, but the people that are really smashing it, there's teams of people doing it. Um, and that's one big point is that teams of people can do a lot more than one single person. And that's something to keep in mind. And it's another reason why communities are important. Yeah, no, I'd like to. Uh, I put the I put the link in the uh, in the chat here. Uh, it's not in the chat; it's in the description. So yeah, no, I mean, community is important. Um, a community like this, a community where people can talk and share secret knowledge. Uh, uh, there's only there's a very few that are good, and they're the kind of ones that are not really trying to sell you anything. They're trying to help you. And and the, the benefit is when everyone comes back and says, I'm doing well, I'm ranking, here's how I did it. Not like Blackout Forum where yeah. a bunch of people go on there and say, oh, yes, I'm ranking. How would you do it? Well, I can't tell you. Uh, it's my secret. That's yeah. not the kind of group, group you want to be part of, right? It's the kind of group that will tell you everything they can in the time that they have to, to, to donate. Um, Bubble Soccer Minnesota says, what, in your opinion, are the most important on-page quality criteria Google is looking for? It's hard to focus on all of them. What would be the top three? Um, for my answer for that, it's hard. It's really hard to answer that. As far as I can tell in all the research I've done, in terms of quality, it has nothing to do with the text on your page per se. It has everything to do with the user signals Google tracks when they get there. So that's going to be different for every niche, right? Uh, are they supposed to read your article? Then they should be reading it with their mouse and then leaving. Uh, are they supposed to buy? When well, they should be buying, right? Um, and then... There is, a, there is a quality criteria in terms of is it thin content, 
Is it tag page? Is it duplicated content? Is it just garbage text? Are there misspellings? Um, those kinds of things. I have a long list uh, on my uh, on my blog, themoralconcept.net slash pandalist.html. Those are the kind of content things they're looking for. But even in that list, you'll notice that it's mostly user signals. And all the evidence we have seems to indicate that they're tracking user signals, despite the fact that Google will never outright admit it, because they can't, because they don't want you to be manip trying to manipulate it the way we do. <laughs> they won't tell you, but their, their, their uh, employees will uh, get granted patents that say it. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, they have plenty of patents talk, talking about it, but they will never admit it. Their patents talk about it a lot. Uh, 3D Printer Chat says, I just feel that we spend thousands on different tools. I want to take a second to talk about that because that, you're right. That's important. SEMrush is a great tool. Hrefs is a great tool. Core is a great tool. But they're all fairly expensive, right? They're fairly pricey. Core is probably the cheapest of all those tools, actually, that I just mentioned. Uh, and But SEO is not about tools. SEO is about knowledge. If you have the, the, the wherewithal to gain the knowledge and to learn about SEO and join a group like this and listen to us and start working on things on your own, it's a business investment like anyone else getting these tools. When you get as big as we are, we need these tools. I have a, I have a, a subscription to all three of the above and more. Uh, it's because I need them to answer questions for people who come to me. You may not need this tool or that tool. You could be, you know, you could, you could go on core for a while and get off it. Uh, you don't, unless you're an SEO agency, you don't necessarily need to have the agency version of Hrefs or SEMrush or Cora running all at the same time. Uh, it, it all depends on who you're doing SEO for, and 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 uh, do you, are you doing local SEO and global SEO and e-commerce SEO and affiliate SEO? I have to answer all those kinds of questions because I have all those kinds of clients coming to me for audits and, and whatnot. If you're only do local SEO, then you only need those tools. If you're only trying to do local SEO for your own site then you may not need those tools necessarily. You could just ask an expert and they can give you their knowledge on a one-time kind of fee or payment kind of a deal. So implicit in that question, if, if you don't mind me saying 3dprinterchat.com, whoever you are, don't have a tool reliance either. No tool is going to help rank your site. And if you're just the kind of script kitty, forgive me for saying that. I don't know if you are, but if, if, if you're more of a script kitty where you're just, Show me the tool like SE Nuke, and I'm just going to press buttons and rankings will happen. That day, I don't know if you guys disagree, but that day is long done. It's dead. It's done. You, you need some tools to help you out and give you knowledge, but it's knowledge at the end of the day that's really going to help you, in my opinion. I don't know. Do you guys agree or disagree? It's knowledge, and that's why talking about a tool like SEMrush, Ahrefs, those tools bring knowledge because with SEMrush, I can make quick, fast, immediate wins in my campaigns that make clients or my sites make money very quickly if i didn't have that knowledge then i wouldn't know that i was starting to pop for this this new 2000 query set from a one page you know that kind of knowledge is important because then you make a few tweaks maybe a link maybe internal but then you got the traffic and the revenue follows you know so um i, I really do agree with the fact that it's the knowledge um and even even people that want to be script kitties um, if you don't have the knowledge and you do a new of a tool that works without the knowledge, you're just going to blow something up. Um, and, and in most cases, most people coming in now, they're going to blow things up with those kind of tools. Um, everyone's going to blow something. So at some point. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's true. <laughs> you're probably going to break something. If you haven't broken something, you probably don't know. You probably haven't you're not, hit it hard enough. You're not pushing it hard enough. Yeah. You're not hitting it hard enough. Okay, so we're going to get I don't want to go on that much longer. I just want to answer a couple more questions. Yeah. Uh, Broken Dira asks, uh, did I get a Google penalty if I put a German language website name and links in the English site footer? Uh, the answer is no. There's no penalty for having Chinese links pointing to your English site or vice versa. I can answer that one quickly. Uh, SEO Sean asks, Clint, I'd be interested in your view regarding PBNs. Clint, do you want to mention anything about PBNs? I, I still use them, but if you're not going to build your own, hire someone that actually has some common sense that can make them right uh, and only tell to people you trust. I won't tell you who I buy them from because I trust them and I don't want them to get greedy on me. <laughs> um, but if you build your own, then you, got, you need to be following someone like um, Mike and Brad. Uh, and how they do that, uh, make those actual real sites, making real money, making real traffic, sending real traffic. Otherwise, don't bother. Kid Progio asks, is Mike and Brad's course SEO focused? 
Um, I would say yes and no. What would you guys say? SEO, Facebook, making money, pretty much. Yeah, have, building a two-pronged agency, for the most part. Uh, if you don't want to, if you don't want to do Facebook for clients, do Facebook to bring yourself more, uh, more affiliate income or more client income through lead form ads, like Steve was talking about earlier, into the day. I, I I can say as a as a a non asked for a testimonial, I can definitely say that uh, the, the work that these guys do do is very good. I've seen their seminars. Mike's uh, patent work is very good, uh, even better I think than uh, uh, what's his face there at SEO. Uh, what what's his name? SEO by the Sea. Bear, uh, Slosky, uh, Bill Slosky. Yeah. And Bill uh, I know the work they do is very good, and the rankings, the, the the websites that we work on together, all the rankings are doing very very well as well. So I can definitely uh, uh, give them a testimonial for their uh, their course that I have uh, the links in the description. And not only that, I'm going to give you an extra special. Right now is SEO miss, and I'm giving off 30% off SEO audits to anyone who asks me up until around January 1st. But I will go one step further. For anyone who joins Website Takeover, the link is in the bottom, I will give you a SEO audit for 30% off. That's right. Anyone who is in uh, Mike and Brad's uh, or even Steve's customers. Steve's customers too. <laughs> I will give you 30% off an SEO audit. You just have to prove to me that you're a customer of these fine folks, and I will give you 30% off my SEO audit for, for White Hat SEO stuff. I, I can guarantee better rankings after my audit, uh, after three to six months, and uh, I'll give that away because it's SEO, miss, and I'm in a giving mood. <laughs> I will give 30% uh, off to SEO audits for people who are in your, in your network as well. I will say that it, to us, it's about seeing the whole community come together and, and, and everyone grow. And that's what 2018 is going to be about. Steve's got amazing stuff coming out in Web Traffic Takeover. Um, the way we're tying it with the SEO, it, it is going to be about, and it, it's like, it comes down to making money for everybody. So, um, sales, affiliate, uh, client work. I'm going to try to convince you if you do affiliate to do client work. If you only do client work, I'm going to try to convince you to do affiliate as well. I want to see you diversify. I've lost my ass overnight, you know, because I wasn't diversified well enough, you know, back in like 2007 and another year. But um, yeah, I, I'm going to be pushing you to push yourself. So I, I do think that you need to come in wanting to have the skill sets, and that's what it's going to be for is, is growing your your revenue and your business and your streams in 2018. Sweet, uh, and I, I I couldn't agree more. Uh, you got to diversify, uh, but you got to find a group that has the knowledge you need first. And uh, you know, this this is the group, and I, I can definitely recommend you guys. You guys definitely have the knowledge. Clint has the knowledge. Steve has the knowledge. Mike and Brad they have the knowledge. Ted has the knowledge too. His Chorus software is fantastic as well. Uh, if you guys want more information about that, email me. So. With that in mind, I, we should probably end the show. We've been going for a long time here. So before, uh, I'll just give out my contact information before I forget. If you have any SEO questions, if you want, no more, want to know more about my SEO audits that I talked about, or you just want to ask me an SEO question, or you want to wish me a merry SEO miss, send me a merry SEO miss email at joshbashinsky at gmail.com. You can follow me at Twitter at joshbashinsky, and you can watch more videos with more SEO knowledge, SEO leaks, SEO experiments, secret Google leaks that I have access to. Uh, I should be getting some more Google knowledge lately, actually. John Mueller normally does a secret hangout around this time of year. I'll definitely join that and tell you in secret all the secret stuff that I learned. And uh, at youtube.com slash jbachins, that's J-B-A-C-H-Y-N-S. Folks, what are your last thoughts? You want to give out your contact information? You want to you say something last? Now's the time to say it. Brad, you go first. Uh, if you need to get in touch with me, Brad at NFG SEO, just go out there and make money. That's it. Sweet. Clint? I'm good. Thanks, guys. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Clint is very good. I, I could I could definitely say that. Uh, Mike, you just everyone have a damn good year. Be make it profitable, and and thanks Josh and Clint for running the show and everything. You're you're absolutely welcome. And finally, last but not least, my friend Steve of the Facebook uh ilk. I would say everybody on here stop using web traffic ads immediately. Switch to page view conversion ads. Save yourself a ton of money and uh, start looking into Messenger. You guys will do, a, do really well if you do that. Sweet. Well, thank you very much, folks. This has been the White Hat versus Black Hat SEO show. I would like to thank all the people who are here today, including Ted Kabaitis, who had to leave early. 
Uh, this is probably, this is, this will not probably be, this is for sure, Clint, do you agree? This is for sure the last show we're doing this year. We're not doing another show until next year. I said it last time when I was hopped up on drugs and I was seeing leprechauns and fairies. This time I'm only hopped up on caffeine. My name is Annie, apparently. I got my gun and I'm telling you. Annie, are you okay? I am okay. Are you okay, Annie? I am okay. I knew the Michael Jackson joke would come off, actually. I'm getting my gun and I'm telling you that this is the last show of this year. So I want to wish everyone a Merry Essiomis. Uh, email me if you need anything. Uh, I'll still answer emails, but I'm not going to be doing any more videos until next year. I have a big video coming out for you very soon. Uh, uh, those people who follow me for a while know what that's going to be all about. And as I always say, good luck in the Serbs and goodbye. See you, see you later, guys. Thanks for joining. Peace.